You have to look at your data before you make your decisions. For Michael Schmoker, just going to highlight a little piece of this. You have to get the data in front of your teachers. Get the data in front of them early in the year. Let them look at the data, see where the strengths are, see where the weaknesses are. This is job one. Also, from Alan Blankstein, he talks about high-performing schools. They don't look at data as abstract out there. They look at that as day-to-day -day ways to improve student achievement. Character alone doesn't do it. Data alone doesn't do that. But when you bring the marriage of these together and you have the doctor in the house, you can do amazing things for boys and girls. Former Secretary of Education, Rod Page, a great quote. If you don't access assess where you are, what the students have learned and not learned, you're teaching in the dark. And that's analogous to driving at night without headlights. Know the strengths and weaknesses of your students. Using data, data should be used for educational purposes, not to blame an individual teacher. Yes, data should be used for educational purposes. Now, does anyone know what this is? Everyone have one of these? GPS. Like coming from the airport last night, I had my GPS on, making sure that I was moving in the right direction. What does a GPS say when you make a wrong turn? It says recalculating route. That is right. It doesn't say, you idiot, you just made a wrong turn. It says recalculating route. And every day in our schools, we also have a GPS. And that's our data. Our data lets us know if we're on the correct route or if we need to do something. If our students aren't showing progress, maybe we need to take a look at how we're looking, using our data. Really believe in this. Without data, you're only one person with an opinion. Anybody can say they work in a great school, but it really it takes your data to show that you're working in a great school. I've done this many times. I've been to many character conferences, and I've asked the speaker, can you talk to us about how having a school of character improved your data? And they said, well, our scores went up. I said, well, over a period of time, for one year, and they really didn't talk about their data. I really believe you have to show your data to show that what you're talking about to be true. Just a quick look at Crestwood's data. We were in the low 60s with our communication arts scores in 7, 8, 9, upper 60s, low 70s, and then the last three years, about 80%. In the state of Missouri, those are very high scores. Missouri has one of the highest thresholds for proficient in the entire country. It's one of five states to be determined to have the highest standards for proficiency. In mathematics, we're even a little bit stronger. Eight years in a row, we've been over 80%. Last year, almost 90. So our theme this year, in our ninth year, let's get to 90. Only school in Missouri to be over 80% eight years in a row. And that is because, thank you. That is because of the performance of our subgroup students. Our subgroup students are doing a miraculous job. It's because of character. It's because of relationships. It's because they know they're loved. I'm a big hugger. I probably get at least 400 hugs a day. I love that when I taught high school, I wasn't much of a hugger because it was a lot different. But at the elementary school, I get to hug boys and girls all day long. Look at our subgroup scores. If you look at 2005, 2005 is when we started doing Caring School Community. We had a great coach named Susie Ward, and she is here today. And Susie would come out to our school and work with us and help us to improve our achievement. But when you look at 2005, look at our African-American students and our, some of our students, they just really went up. Free reduced, 8% to 57% in one year. Our IEP students went from zero to 68%. One more highlight on the bottom, our English language learners. We have students, like he said, 15, 16 different countries. We were in the 20s. We moved to the 50s and the 60s. Last year, we were at 90%. Look down at the bottom. The state average is 17% of ELL students are proficient in reading. We beat that five times five times as high of a score, over 90% because of character. 
because of treating children with respect, having mutual respect in our building. Math, the same. We saw big gains when we started character education. Our African-American score in one year went from 23% proficient to 70%. Once again, our ELL students, look at the growth, 50, 60, 80, and then the last four years, either 90 or 100%. Principle 11, talking about your data. Our data is strong because of character. We even make predictions. Before we take the map test, I look at all of our data. I look at the data, determine what our scores are going to be. On the left is the prediction. On the right is the score. It's amazing. Predicting scores of 74, having 74s. Scores of 85, having that score be 85. Data can be a powerful tool when you mix it in with loving boys and girls.